you're going to use that opportunity to go and, and indoctrinate these kids with your street ghetto philosophy certain point if you raise your level of income to the status of a rock star then uh -huh, uh -huh, then, right. then you got to keep coming up with ways to maintain that status we i mean i'm not even i'm not even saying eat meat but at least put some cereal in the milk come on <laughs> you that's like taking 666 the mark of the beast and redefining it like biggie tried to do and saying no it means this or that no, 666 is 666, you can call it holy 666, but it's still the mark of the beast. Convenient, whether it's welcome or unwelcome, you as preachers of the word are to show people in what way their lives are wrong. We welcome you now to a true church perspective with Pastor G. Greg Lewis. Blessings to all. This is G. Craig Lewis here with another True Church Perspective. And you can visit us on the web at true-church.org or exministries.com. We've been sharing on this broadcast the book of Revelations in dealing with the seven churches of Asia for the past two months. And we've gone through the church at Laodicea as well as the church at Pergamos. All of the past broadcasts, you can download them for free. We just ask that you support our ministry. If possible, you can support our ministry by going online and sending us a donation online, or you could just buy our products. That helps us a lot. You could get our CDs or DVDs on our website, EX Ministry. Ministries.com and every DVD you purchase actually helps our ministry. So, well, you know, we don't want to be a burden on you, but we do want you to be a blessing to our ministry if you are being blessed by these messages because we want to keep bringing them to you. And radio time is not free. And I thank God for those that have uh, participated with us and they have asked to remain anonymous, but we've had several people just give us donations to sponsor a week or two of our broadcast and if you're willing to do that if, if God has led you to do that we ask that you contact our website as well true-church.org if you want to sponsor or if you have a company that would like to sponsor our broadcast if you want your name called we'll do it if you want to remain anonymous you'll do it however you want to do it but we just want to be able to be a blessing to those that need the word of God you know the truth is getting very very hard to find but we're blessed God in a position where we don't have to compromise and sell out to keep a certain amount of people listening or to keep a certain amount of people involved. We really don't care. We're just going to tell you the truth because we believe the Bible when it says the truth, you will know and it will make you free. So let's go to the word of God. We're going to Revelations and we're going to start at Revelations 3 and 1. This time we're going to deal with the church at Sardis. The scripture says, and unto the angel of the church in Sardis write, these things saith he that hath the seven spirits of God and the seven stars. I know thy works that thou hast a name that thou livest and art dead. Be watchful and strengthen the things which remain that are ready to die. For I have not found thy works perfect before God. Remember, therefore, how thou hast received and heard and hold fast and repent. If therefore thou shalt not watch, I will come on thee as a thief and thou shalt not know what hour I will come upon thee. Thou hast a few names, even in Sardis, which have not defiled their garments, and they shall walk with me in white, for they are worthy. He that overcometh the same shall be clothed in white raiment, and I will not blot out his name out of the book of life, but I will confess his name before my God and before his angels. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. Okay, we have a predicament here in the church in Sardis, and we're going to deal with this based on scripture, and we'll be dealing with this for the next couple of weeks. But the church at Sardis, the name kind of gives us some insight to what's going on. The name Sardis is actually escaping ones or those that come out or coming out of. Now, the first verse actually gives us insight into where Jesus is going when he's talking about this church. The red writing tells us these things saith the seven spirits of God and the seven stars. I know thy works that thou hast a name that thou livest 
and art dead. First, Christ gives us his disposition by saying he that hath the seven spirits of God. Seven is God's perfect number, speaking of the Holy Spirit and the works of the Holy Spirit. And then he says the seven stars, speaking of these seven churches that he's addressing. So he's basically showing his ownership, showing his authority and showing his authority over the church. When the Bible tells us that the man is the head of the woman as Christ is the head of the church, it's really talking about the man being the savior of the body of a woman and I don't have time to go into all of that I do have a video about it strengthening the bond DVD if you get a chance to order that you can order that at exministries.com but I illustrate it a little more in depth on that video but God is really saying that the man is the savior of the woman he's the savior of his house he's a savior of the family in other words he gives himself for the family in any way that needs to be given he provides he protects he is the leader and this is what Christ is starting out saying he's saying I am the leader of this church I have all the workings of the spirit I have the power of the spirit that will that should dwell in your church and then I hold your church in the palm of my hand or I hold or I take possession of the church so here is Christ saying the church belongs to me not to you and this is very key because he right after that he follows and says I know your works and you have a name that liveth but you are dead so basically he's saying you have a church that is operating functioning looking like it's doing something but it's dead i'm not involved in it and so this is very powerful let's deal with this right here just this first scripture kind of like timothy tells us having a form of god godliness but denying the power thereof from such turn away that particular scripture is saying you have a church and we look around we see all these beautiful buildings we see all these beautiful churches we see these pristine just pastors with all this money and television time and radio time and I mean they're on everything they're always talking and yet you go into their services you go into their churches and the church is dead now it may be alive with music it may be a lot of entertaining going on it, it may be a lot of things that tantalize your eyes and tickle your fancy but Christ is saying that the church is dead why because Christ is not in it he is the way the truth and the life and without him there there is no life that is a dead church now we need to first talk about how these churches become dead and I mean there are several you know ways that lead to it but I'm going to really talk about you know some of the most popular ways that churches are being killed and the first one is churches are being built without Christ now Christ is saying I own the church he's saying the seven spirits come from me the power and authority in your church is going to come from me so first you have to have me to build a church and then he's saying I possess or hold the church in my hand it is my church I'm responsible for it so he's saying that without him there is no church so now he's using that in contrast to say you know your church has a name but without me your church is dead now we have people that are pastoring churches now and and you know they don't need a church and you can tell by the just their actions the way they're talking everybody doesn't need to be pastoring a church we could consolidate churches left and right and i'm not talking about small churches i'm talking about huge churches some huge churches folks don't need to be pastoring you know they're still on the road evangelizing all the time they're never there they have no contact with the leaders and and aren't training people in evangelism and the way to kill a church is to make the leader of the church responsible for winning souls and that is what's killing most of our churches and what do i mean by that well what I'm saying is a lot of our churches have men that have placed themselves, as we talked about the church at Pergamos, in such high exalted positions that these men are worshipped as gods or revered as gods. And so what ends up happening is the people are dumbed down. The people don't have spiritual security in God because their security is in the man. In other words, they're dependent on the man to give them a word. They're dependent on the man to always tell them what to do. They're dependent on the man in the middle, as we talked about last week, to give them instruction and tell them what to do. And so if they're in that position, then what they do is they switch their responsibility to win souls to that man. These are the people that work a job for 20 years and never even win a soul to 
Christ at the job. They live next door and live in the neighborhood of people and they've never introduced themselves as Christians or never even appeared as a Christian. A lot of time you don't have to say anything. You just have to appear as one, act like one, behave like one. But they, when they have the Super Bowl party, they drinking beer and smoking and cussing just like everyone else. So this is where you shug your responsibility. You take the weekend to party and have a good time. You take the week to kick back and watch movies and always just chilling in the cut and never doing anything for Christ because you got this man that you've placed in that position to do everything for you. And the saddest part is a lot of these men like this. They love this kind of behavior, these leaders, because it puts them in a godlike position where they can control what the people do. Uh, another bad part about these kinds of churches is that you have churches that have been established for years. They go through all the motions and they have the deacons wailing on their knees and they have the, you know, the folks crying and hollering out in churches and barking and making all these woo -woo and just all they got all the rainforest sound sounding like a jungle up in the church. And then when the organ gets started, they all shouting and weaves and wigs just going everywhere. And they have all the trappings to make it look like something is going on. And Christ is saying, I'm not in none of that. All that is emotionalism. You are excited about nothing. And that is what's going on in Sardis. Now, Sardis, the particular city was very powerful. It was a wealthy city. It had a lot of wealth. But one of the major problems of this church at Sardis was they were living off their old reputation. In other words, they were living off the reputation of being powerful, even when they were no longer powerful. They were living off the reputation of being great, even when they were no longer great. So this scripture is telling us you have the name that liveth, meaning everybody remembers what you used to be. But now you are are dead. Now, this is very, very intriguing to me because it reminds me of the story in the Old Testament of Samson. And you, we know Samson was a very powerful man. He was a warrior for God, you know, and he had this long hair because of the vow of the Nazarite that he had taken. And Samson had a problem with this lady named Delilah. And Delilah was not an Israelite, so God did not want the Israelites intermingling with the other religions that worship false gods. He wanted to keep Israel's bloodline pure. He wanted to keep them pure unto himself as an, as an illustration about the blood of Jesus, the purity of the blood, how Christ's blood purifies ours. And this was the illustration of Israel. He At the time, he wanted to keep Israel pure. And let me say this real quick. We don't want to get caught up in a lot of the traditions of the Israelites because the natural traditions in most cases in the scripture were illustrations for the Gentiles. Gentiles or for the Bible to show us like Hosea marrying a prostitute. That doesn't mean that if you want to be pleasing to God, you got to go marry a hoe. That ain't what the, that's not what the scripture meant. Uh, Hosea actually married a prostitute to illustrate God being married to the backslider and marrying you and then restoring the bloodline and making you one with his chosen ones. And that's kind of what he has done with the Gentiles. And that's what he was doing with the Jews because they kept going after false gods and he wanted to show I'm married to you you belong to me come back I'll restore you so that's why Jose married the prostitute so let's let, let's understand we don't go back in the Old Testament and just start doing stuff that we see a lot of these things that did not have significant spiritual connotations to them or wasn't going to be damaging to us spiritually God was using those as examples or illustrations to show some things that he was doing at the time now, that doesn't mean that, oh, well, then uh, he said, don't get tattoos. That was an illustration in the spirit realm. No, no, no. Marking your body will bring a curse upon you. That has spiritual connotations to it. So you got to be smart and wise. And, and it's sad that pastors just aren't preaching this stuff. You know, they feel like if if I preach against tattoos, all the tattooed members going to stop tithing. And if I preach against homosexuality, all the flaming members that just flaming hot, burning up the pew they sitting on, I can't say nothing because I 
because I don't want them to stop tithing. Come on, y'all. We need some men of God that are strong enough to preach the Bible in season, out of season, when it's convenient, when it's not convenient. But let me get back to this example of Samson. Samson was a powerful warrior of God, and he illustrates this whole ordeal in Sardis better than any other illustration that I could find. Samson was great, powerful, but he started messing with this woman and began to mix the bloodline and got involved with her. And this woman was working for the Philistines. So she basically asked him and coerced him into telling her where his power came from. And Samson just said, oh, it's my hair. The power is in my hair, which the power wasn't really in his hair. The power was the power of God. But his hair was an illustration that the Bible is using to show something. And after she cut his hair, she said, Samson, get up. The Philistines are in here. He got up. Now, here's the thing. It wasn't really his hair where the power was. The power was in God, but God had left him. The spirit of the Lord left him. And the scripture tells us in uh, Judges 16 and 20, she said, the Philistine be upon thee, Samson. And he awoke up of his sleep and said, I will go out as at other times before and shake myself. And he did not know that the Lord was departed from him. That is very powerful because this is where the church of Sardis was. And this is where a lot of churches are now. I'm going to do it like we've been doing it before and we're going to keep doing it. And they don't even realize that the power of God is not there anymore. We're going to keep shouting and dancing. And when the organ starts, we're going to just take off running and, and we're going to cut a rug for the Lord like the old folks say. And they don't even know that the power of God is not with them. And this is what Jesus was saying. You have a name that liveth, meaning you look legit. It looks right. And see, that's what people don't realize about Samson. Samson got up. He had the same build, the same muscles. He looked the same. But the power of God was not with him. So he when he went to fight the real battle with the Philistines, he had no power. And he was destroyed. And this is where the church is now. You know, back when things were bad, but they were nowhere near what they are now. We had churches that were really powerful. We had stories of people getting out of wheelchairs and we have stories of people throwing their canes. And we have stories of people being, you know, laid out under the power of God and the power of God in operation in churches. We had men of God where people would come into church to, to kill them and they would just stand up and and folks would freeze and folks. Folks couldn't move and the power of God would paralyze folks. We had folks that would come to church with demons in them. And before they would leave that service, they would be delivered, speaking in tongues, filled with the Holy Ghost. Where are those stories now? It looks the same. It feels the same. And this is why we don't get caught up in feeling. Some of the churches feel the same. They preach and they saying the same words, but the power is not there. Folks come to church now possessed by a devil. They take them out, take them to the back. They don't want anyone to see the pastor doesn't have the power to cast the devil out. Folks come in wheelchairs. They leave in wheelchairs. They come on crutches. They leave with crutches. They come with a bag full of prescription drugs. They leave with a bag full of prescription drugs. What is going on, y'all? It looks like church, but the power of God is not there now what has destroyed or brought the church to this is the leadership and because the leadership of the churches have become corrupt with sin and corrupt with false gods just like samson samson had corrupted himself with the sin and false god idolatry of delilah and those philistines that went after false gods see the reason god was against them was their persecution of his people they persecuted god's people because they did not serve the same God. And this is why God does not want the world and the church to mix. This is why God does not want there to be a mixture of false gods and true God. See, listen, when God says you cannot serve two masters, he's saying under no circumstances is it possible for you to serve two two masters so he's not saying you cannot serve two masters like you cannot go outside and you might still go outside no he's saying you cannot meaning it is impossible to in other words if there are two there's really just one and that's the one that you adore because you can't serve god if there's another one so if there's 
two gods, then there's really just one. You just subtract God from it because he will not stand where another God is being promoted. And so what has happened is these pastors have adopted the philosophy of false gods. They've intermingled. They're sleeping with false gods. They're living with false gods, these leaders. And so they're corrupting the body of Christ and they're losing power. Now, this particular church at Sardis, they had all of the trappings of a good church and they and they had the stories all oh, they had the stories because it was in their past so they could constantly tell you what happened when grandmama used to pray and when great grandmama used to pray where grandmother used to pray and really have power we make fun of that now in comedy that's funny now why because grandmama now is 30 years old looking for her season her harvest and her breakthrough and her daughter and daughter's daughter can't don't have a chance because the 35 year old grandmama is out of order and, and doesn't know how to raise her own children and this is what that church was about God is saying don't tell me about what grandmama did don't tell me about what the old church did don't come to me with that what is the church doing now God is saying you look good and you talk a good talk and you're saying good things but you are dead you have a form of godliness but you deny the power thereof there is no power now, this is very powerful, and we're going to dig some more into this next week. But the scripture is clear here. Christ had a problem, and he was no longer with this particular church. And that is where we are now. We look at our churches. Is Christ a part of what we are seeing? Come on, people of God. It is very obvious. You see the merge of the church. But a lot of people don't want to upset anything. They don't want to ruffle any feathers. They want to stay comfortable where they are. But they don't understand that the church is being destroyed from the inside out just like Samson stood up and said oh let me go destroy these Philistines like I like I've always done let me go and show them what I can do like I always have and he looked apart but he had no power in him because he had laid with the woman God had commanded him not to lay with. And now our church is laying with the world. God has said, come out of the world, come out from among them and be ye separate, saith the Lord. But we are laying with the enemy and God is dis please so the power is being deleted from our churches just like the church at sardis and god is saying i run the church christ is saying i'm ahead of the church he's saying i hold the church in my hand these seven churches belong to me so if you're functioning and you're operating without me it is a dead church People of God, this hour is so severe. We got the scare of this flu and, you know, the media is putting all of this fear in you and it's on purpose. See what the media wants you to fear. It's not the flu. The media wants you to fear what the flu might do. If the media can make you afraid of what the flu might do, then your power that you say you have now rest in their ability to immunize everyone. In other words, if they can put the fear of the flu in you, then they hold the power to restore your comfort level or to make you unfearful by giving immunizations. And that is a trick of the doggone devil. Hear what I'm saying. The devil wants fear. But the Bible tells us God has not given us the spirit of fear, but power, love and a sound mind. In other words, if you have the Holy Ghost, you can be healed. But see, the devil has been working on these pastors been working on these churches all this time to stop the laying on of hands by the elders and the laying on of the oil to, to anoint by the elders so that the, the sick can be well. He's been working on that for years. And now we don't have healings in the church. We don't have power in the man of God. He doesn't lay hands on you anymore. He doesn't put all on. You. He doesn't anoint you. He doesn't get you well anymore by the power of God. Now those things aren't even believed. They're talking about what grandmama did and all oh, if grandmama was living great grandmama was living there was a man back then that could pray for the sick and he would recover but now these clubbing preachers these uh, secular radio station preachers these old homosexual preachers these old preachers that are after money and dollars they don't have power to heal the sick what's going to happen when folks show up in church with a deadly virus and the man of god doesn't have the power He's going to get up and he's going to look the part. He's going to get up and look like he can do it. He's going to get up and things in the church and the feeling, the organ and the shouting and dancing and everything looks the same. 
Oh, but he's going to be just like Samson and not even know that the spirit of God is not with him. And his church all this time has been dead. I'm telling you, y'all, that's what this flu is, this this scare. And the media is going to keep doing these kinds of things because they want us dependent upon the power of government. They want us dependent upon the power of the one world government. They want us dependent upon the power of the Antichrist and the leaders, all of these different things. They want us to submit our fears to them so that they can take our fear away by offering us solutions and antidotes. And that is just a setup for the leader of the world government governments but we should not be afraid the bible says we should have power love and a sound mind people of god we need to really understand what is going on in this church and christ's letter to this church let me pray father god i believe lord god that you spoke this message today i believe that this message about sardis is just as relevant to us as it was then father god i believe you are speaking to the dead churches with the dead leaders god there are many of us god that are going through the motions there are many out here lord that are just going through it and really don't want to question too much but know something is wrong and father i believe believe that these messages and the true church perspective are revealing those things that are wrong father god and i believe that you're not just giving us the the problem but you're giving us and offering us a solution and that solution is you father if a church is dead without you then that just means we need you and father i pray right now for every pastor leader bishop every lay member every boy girl father that they would need you the more and seek after you so they won't be dead father going through the motions so they won't have a form of godliness looking the part like samson did and looking like they could still do it look showing the muscles and flexing themselves based on what used to be but father they will seek after a new understanding and a new gracing of your power god in this last and evil day and father i pray against the spirit of fear among your people father this thing isn't gonna end tragically for those that serve you father this thing isn't gonna end and 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 your people be left but father you're gonna rescue us one way or another father we belong to you we trust in you you have not given us the spirit of fear so any fear we have is not from you and father i rebuke the spirit of fear right now in this area the metroplex and all over the world with the authority you've given me to speak and rebuke it and come against it father i pray right now with those intercessors that are praying and interceding with me father that this fear this scare tactic that the government has concluded cocked will not harm your people father but we will be true examples of what happens when you are in the world but not of the world that we do not submit to the rules and laws of the kingdom of darkness but we are members of the kingdom of light in jesus name we'll be back next week with another true church perspective Thank you for joining us for a true church perspective with Pastor G. Craig Lewis. Join us here each Sunday at 9.30 a.m. You can also visit us online at true-church.org. Hi, I'm G. Craig Lewis, and I want to talk to you about our brand new video, Strengthening the Bond. It is a must for all parents, teens, and leaders. With the rise in broken marriages, homes, and families, we need a reality check. Where is this going? What happens when marriage is no longer a sacred institution, and the norm is for children to be born to single or same-sex parents? What will happen to our education system when 90% of our youth are sexually active? What will happen to our youth if they continue to eat unhealthy foods, watch unhealthy television programming, and continue to contract STDs at a 1 to 4 ratio? If we, as the people of God, don't stand up now, we won't have any say in these matters later on. We must stand now. Get this new DVD, Strengthening the Bond, and learn how to preserve the family that God created.